hello guys so in this video we are going to see how to consume rest apis in flutter so for the simplicity i have already created one response which i have hosted on this url on github so if you want to customize the response and want to host your custom response on github you can check out my previous video i will add the link in the description so so for the simplicity what i will do i will create the model of this response so that i can navigate through it very easily so for creating the model of this response i just quickly select this all copy this and i will use a tool that is app.quicktype.io so this will help me to create a model very quickly so just paste your response specify the name of the class let's say this is users pets model so i just keep it this do select the language that is dart and you can make all the properties required and make it final just copy this now go to your project and create a new file with the name users underscore pets dot dart and you can paste this code over here so if you're able to see some error what you need to do you need to just remove this add so in order to remove all the add symbols in front of required i will use replace option control h and i just use this required here and replace with required so error is gone let's scroll up and remove unnecessary import save it go back here so what we need to do is just go back to this data and first of all we just create a couple of variables to hold the response so let's say to hold response we need user pets variable that is user pets so initially we don't have data so we cannot declare a variable like this we need to mark it as late as we will be assigning the value later on and then we need a variable to hold whether the data is loaded or not so we will have one flag bool is data loaded so this will tell me that i got a response from the api so initially it would be false and we need one more variable to hold error message in case we are getting some error from the api call we can have a string type of variable error message is equal to i just initially keep it empty that's all so this part is done and next we need to do api call so in order to do so i will create one method get data from api and so this method should be a asynchronous call and to mark it asynchronous we need to use async over here after this parenthesis and we have to return something back so we want to return user pet model here and since this is async function so you cannot simply return any data you need to wrap it with a feature okay so now here you can write your code for api call and getting the response so first of all i just go here and copy this url and i just create a uri for the same uri url is equal to uri dot parse so here we can give this url as a string this is gonna parse it and return one uri object which we can pass to http done so now next we need to do http call and in order to do so we need a http client so for that we need to add dependency in pubspec.yml so here under dependencies you need to add http dependency so what we can do simply go to your browser and type pub.dev 
and search for the HTTP dependency over here. And if you go here, you can see HTTP and simply copy this. So go to this dependencies under Cupertino. I just add it and save it. This is going to automatically fetch the dependencies. And meanwhile, it is fetching the dependencies. You can see how we can use it. So first of all, you need to import it. Then you can do HTTP call. So I just go back here, go back to the project and add the import on the top. And just go down. And here we need to do HTTP dot. We have different methods like get and post. So since this is a simple API endpoint, so we will use get over here. So in get, we need to pass the URL, which we have already created. And this gonna return us one response back. So let's hold this into a response variable. And one more thing, this is again a synchronous call. So we should always await for this call. Once we will get response back, then it will put it into this response variable. So now we need to check for this response status code. So if this response dot status code is equal to is equal to 200, that is for OK. If it is OK, then you can just fetch your data and convert it into that user pets model. So you can also use like we have a class HTTP status dot OK. So you can do this. So this is providing some constants like OK. So this OK is also having the same value 200. So you can use any of these. Either you can use 200 directly or you can use this HTTP status class. So let's come back here. So once you got your response, we need to convert it into user pets. So we have already created the model for the same that user pets from JSON. So this model is already having one method from JSON, which you're going to take one string as a argument and return you the model back. Okay, so let's use it and pass the response here. So what we need, whatever response we get, we will get in the body part. So we will pass that body into this as an argument and this is going to give us back user pets model. Okay, so that user pets model we can return from this. So let's quickly return user pets. This is return over here. So second scenario, if we are not getting OK status, then what we need to do? Then we need to simply return some error. So for that, we have error message is equal to, let's create a custom error message where I will say dollar response dot status code whatever status code and whatever corresponding error message so that we are getting from response dot body so this would be my error message and we again need to return something back so let's return a simple empty user users pets so this data is basically a list so we can simply give it empty list so this part is over api call is done now what we need to do we need to call this once your page has been initialized so in order to do so so init state method we need to override and here you can call that method So for the simplicity, what I do, I just create one more method that is assign data. So this method gonna call this one. Let's call this one. And since it is again an asynchronous call and you need to await this. So this gonna give us what? One user pets back. So we will do what we will use this variable and initialize it over here. Okay, let's use user pets is equal to this. So since this method 
is using await so we need to mark this method as async okay so done with this and one more thing once your data is loaded you have to set just use the set state and specify is data loaded is equal to true and you can simply call this over here so that's all for the logic part so let's go to the ui part now here what we need to do in the body we need to check for is data loaded so if my data is not loaded then do what simply show a progress indicator round round the so const in center we can add a child and add a circular it's circular progress indicator okay so if data is not loaded keep on showing the circular progress indicator otherwise if data is loaded if data is loaded we need to check do we have any error message so we will check again if error message is not empty then do what simply display a text field and saying whatever error message it is so again you can wrap this into center widget and just cut this const and put it over here so in the center we can display the error message which is coming from error message variable okay so since uh, this is dynamic data you cannot put const okay so this condition is fine if error message is not empty then display the error message otherwise go ahead and grab your data so otherwise we can check for one more condition if the user pets dot we have data that is an array dot is not okay if it is empty then you can simply return one more text and say no data again you can wrap this into center widget so last condition i will add over here so here you need to display your list view dot builder so i just complete this list view before that let me wrap this into the center so that it should look nice and we need to take this const outside and let's complete this builder now so here we need to again assign one function which is going to return one widget back so this widget we can create a separate method for the same let's say get my row and we can pass the index and i think all done we have one more property that we need to use here so if you haven't seen my list view video in flutter you can cross check i will add the link in the description so we have to use item count here as well so that count we will be getting from user pets dot data dot length and comma so comma is already there let's create this method which is the last thing we are going to do create this method and this is gonna give us a widget back so let's mention the return type and just quickly return a simple card for each row and for each card we should have a child that is a list tile and for list tile we have title and the title we can have a simple text and the data for the same would be let's say user pets dot data and the index we are getting as a argument and dot you can say username let's save this and try to see if it works so we just restart this in case we are facing any problem
so let's see what's problem maybe we need to remove this extra html and check so we are facing some problem with this so we need to import this dart.io not dart.html so that was a mistake so let's save it and it is doing hot reload and the app is closed let's quickly start it again APK is created. So installing and let's see. So it should be showing one circular progress indicator over here initially. So meanwhile, it is doing API call. Okay, so here you go. So once data is loaded, you can see the same data is coming over here. So we have this, this, this. Okay, fine. So now we left with just decoration part. So what I do is I just quickly decorate all this stuff, add this comma. So instead of doing this text only, I will add it into column and I will show here one more text that would be the dog name. So in order to show the dog name, I just cut this and do interpolation that is dog and simply do this and for this username i just add some style that is text style and i just make it bold font weight that is font weight dot bold and we need to add cons since everything is static for the style just save it and you can see this so one more thing i will add over here we will add a cross axis alignment to the start so that data should come from the left side now we left with few more things which we can use like for list style we have trailing and we have leading so for trailing we can simply display one icon so that icon we can display based on some condition so if let's say user pets dot data index dot is friendly if the dog is friendly then we can simply say icons dot pets do we have something pets yep otherwise we will return which icon icon start don't touch kind of thing do underscore not underscore touch yep so let's go ahead and go for the leading one so here i will just simply display a circle avatar and here we have the background image property where we can pass a network image and here we need to pass the url of the image which we will be getting from user pets dot data and index dot do we have that pet image yes save it so the images are loaded so what i do is i will just add more decoration so what i do if this pet is friendly then i'll just add one more property for the icon so let's say color property if the user pet is friendly then you can simply say the color is colors dot green otherwise the color should be red colors dot red save this seems better same thing i will go ahead and use for this circular avatar so we have background color and you can add this condition over here 
so what we can do we can wrap this circular avatar we can just give it some radius let's say 20 and we just add this into one more circular avatar so circle avatar and give it radius 21 so i'm going to add some border over here and the background color for the same is condition now you can just restart and see this here the app is restarted and you can see if the dog is friendly then it should be green and you can see the border here around this circular image so you can scroll up scroll down so we have little one more thing i just want to i just did one little mistake we have to change this username so it should be the dog name so let's say do we have dog name so uh, what's the property over there dot pet name yep so save it so that's all for this video if you have any doubt do comment in the comment section i will add the github repo link in the description thank you